Hello guys and welcome back to another Keth Gaming SP's Reading Time Part 3. So let's get on with Part 3. I hope you all had a good week because I had a good week. So let's keep it this going. So this is the 1st of May. So let's begin with Reading Time. So here we go, Chapter 3. The four astronauts paid the fare, leaving the smallest of the small tips and staggered through the Jablon crowd and up the steps into Los Americos Casino. Lister flicked on for the for either side and decided to take the hopper down central and back toward the Mansell's docks. He slipped the gear into jump and placed himself. The hopper leaped into the air and landed with a spine juttle crunch. 200 yards down Eastern Avenue. The hopper's rear legs reacted into the, the engine housing, then hammered into the ground, pumping him another 200 yards. As it smacked into the terrible three lane highway, Lister's neck was forced into the hollow at the base of his skull. Ooh. Further aggressive and really angry headache, the hopper suspension was completely shot to hell. Lister began to wish he never stole it. Hoppers had been introduced to manners 30 years previously to combat the langless conscience which has blocked the smallest moon round system so badly that advantage minimum traffic jam could last anything up to three weeks. People have been not known to die of starvation. <laughs> In particular bad ones. Hoppers. Which could leave for leave rock over obstacles and spend most of their time in the air. Oh my god, they're in the air. <laughs> okay, help ease the problem. True there were fair numbers of mid air collisions and there was also the possibility of being landed on by a junk driven hopper. But by the large, you will reach your destination in the same season you set off. Okay. Lister watched with every arrow as another hopper overtook him with the easy grace of the more flow licking deer. The next landing was the worst. The hopper hit a metal drain covered with such violence that Lister bit his cigarette in half, and the growing up fell between his thighs and rolled under the seat of his pants. Fragilely, he yanked his body out the seat and tried to sweep the butt on the floor as the hopper leaped madly down the busy highway, like a sick metalconic kangaroo. <laughs> this is getting good. This. Something was burning. It smelled like air, and since it was the only thing in the hopper that had hair, and it was fair to say so some, uh, some part of him was on fire. Some part of him that had hair. He liked all the parts that had hair. Okay, were well, his favourite bits. He sighed such desperately for a place to park. Forget it. In London, people park wherever it was possible. In Paris, people parted even where it was impossible. On Manuel's people parted on top of the people who parted where it was impossible. Stacks of hoppers, three, sometimes four, hard lined the avenue on both sides. A typical Saturday night on Manus. The thick hair, heavy with the smells and noise of the hundred minding cultures, the trotters. Minimum slag for pavements were served by a giant servants of human flesh as people rested their way past the blinking nails of casino and westerns. The on off glads of bars and clubs, shouting, screaming, laughing, automating, you know, bleh. Astros and miners on planet leave going wall wallet bumbling crazy. Desperate for a good time. After months of incubation in the giant space ferrets that had now hung over the moon's shuttle pod, the Earth has long been purged of all its fallible metal resources. 
humankind has been entered in Orm's planet like an Emmy, then turned into Santor Appetite to the rest of the solar system. The Spanish owned Salati of Mars was a supply center and stop off point for thousands of mining vessels, which bundled the smallest planet and the largest moon and asteroids. Smoke betre- began to pummel from between Lister's legs. Lister's legs. <laughs> Still nowhere to park. Traffic glared and feet flogged over him as he scrolled across lanes, fighting to keep patrol. <laughs> Some of the size of Scott Cold or so. In desperation, he grabbed the fountainous flask lying on the passenger seat, struggling with the unfamiliar cap, and threw the contents into his small lap. A hiss signaled the end of the cigarette. There was a second of delicious relief. Oh. Then he smelled coffee. Hot coffee. Piling hot coffee. Piling hot coffee that covered his long wounds. The pain has already hit him by the time he poured the bottle of the hostile cleaner he found in the glove compartment over his thighs. The hopper, now madly out of patrol, clambered off the mutual life insurance building, taking the last chunk of the Neil sign before Lister wrestled it back on the patrol and still wimping in pain, heading to towards the docks. So yeah, I'll leave it here guys. So um, so I hope you like this book because this is reading time part 3. If you want me to continue with this, please do don't forget to give this a like. And don't forget to subscribe because I need to get up to 1,500 subscribers. So don't forget, get this a like, don't forget to hit the subscribe, and please put it on the comments if you want me to continue over this. I'm sorry I got called, but I'm still doing it. So please do if you want me to continue with this. So thank you guys, thank you for tuning in, and peace out.